So wait, we're at what now for purple checks? Um, everything got a plus one. So volition's at a four, authority's at a four, empathy's at a okay. six. So four, it was at a three. Uh, authority was at a three before, yes. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So wait, it's three plus two. What's bringing the authority down? Uh, one of our other uh, things. One of our other uh, thoughts, I believe. Okay. Uh, well, maybe not. Maybe it's what we're wearing? I don't know. Something's bringing it down. I forget what. Okay. All right. Now let's double check at the Cape Side Apartments. I forget which one it's gonna be. You think you have a pretty hot suspect right now, don't you? That ruby of yours. Yeah, and notice how it came together without casting too much suspicion on Classia. It was nice and ruby centric in the end. What do you mean? Anything strike you a bit off about this mishmash? Well, the bullet didn't come from the roof. It could have came from anywhere on the coast. Absolutely. It could have come from anywhere. But you're suddenly so certain it came from the roof behind the window. The bullet was jacketed. These don't... Just lie around any everywhere, do they? Good point. It is rather rare these days, but do continue. Um, I've noticed that during the pigs, we are kind of into the extra long episode range. So you know what? Um, right before the pigs, I'll I'll probably edit out and <laughs> split it up there. Um. It turned out that the bullet wasn't antique. True. Strange how you conducted the whole advanced ballistics analysis and then hand waved it. Uh, the footprints in the pinball workshop didn't fit with the odd soul prints on the crime scene. No, they didn't. Uh. So far, no one has mentioned hearing the shot. Notice how this hasn't come up at all. Even Hardy and his boys didn't mention it. Neither did you. You know, um, I'm done thinking about this. No, I'm sure. think. Finish thought. <laughs> Just finish it and conveniently go on. She's watching you leave right now. You know that. Free as a bird on that roof. Lighting up a cigarette and thinking... Am I glad Ruby's in this shit and not me? Sorry, go ahead. Finish your thoughts. I'm thinking more and more it probably came from the island and we will be getting to the island in the end game, and then everything will be revealed. I mean, that seems the most likely considering that the island was even mentioned as a place that we've never been to. Not to mention the building that we can see that there's a staircase to, but haven't found a way in yet. Yes. Don't listen to this guy. The theory was solid. He's just jealous. Move on. It's no use harassing her further. Okay. Secondary thought. I'm guessing in the abandoned building we can't get into will be where Ruby is hiding out. It could be. And then... we'll find out she's innocent and she will tell us she knows the shot came from the island and then we'll have access to the island. And then before we get to the island, 
all hell will break loose on the mainland will and will eventually get to the island. Where nobody goes? Mike Lewin Og? Wow, I was wondering if I was pulling that out of my ass and no one was going to get it. Several voices having what appears to be an animated discussion. This must be it. Beyond this door lies the beaten heart of radical communism. In How the hell did I remember that? I don't know, but literally I feel like I'm the only one that knows that show exists. How do... How did I remember that? I, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Oh my god! What the hell memory? It, it like only had a season or so. I don't think it had that much. Maybe two? Oh. It's almost as bad as Yakety Yak. Although I did I do remember finding Mike Lou and Og more entertaining. I do not remember Yakety Yak. Yakety Yak was not good. The only thing decent about it was the intro, and even that I could see people getting really irritated with. I could see it being very annoying. Somehow, the night air softens the smell of trash. Two seasons for Mike Lunog. Alright, I, I didn't think it got any more than that. Like a shuttle through a loom, you catch a hint of something unexpected. Something earthy, warm, and burnt. The acrid smell of failure. No! No, that's just slightly burnt coffee. A smell you would recognize anywhere. Just look at these pigs sniffing about after hours. Oh, but Cindy. Cindy, I'm an artist. Did you see the beautiful painting I did? No parking, right? Uh Why did why didn't you say the secret door was right behind you? I'll be honest, I really like Cindy's voice. Whoever did her voice, it's really good. Mm. Must have slipped my mind. You know how it goes. She gives you a lackadaisical shrug. The metal grill is cool to the touch. You notice the lieutenant is looking uncustomarily anxious. His posture is rigid. His right hand hovers near the zipper of his jacket. You okay, Cam? Oh, I'm fine. I was practically born to infiltrate underground communist cells. Takes a quick look over his shoulder. Which is just to say, we should be prepared for any eventuality. Try to listen. He can make out at least two separate voices. Two voices, both male. Approximately early 20s. Care for results now. I have it. It's going to work. I can feel it. Bang on the grill! Hold on, before we do that... Just so that way we have them equipped, I want my encyclopedia stuff so we can get more XP. Yay! Alright. Wait, 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 before you do that, um, anything to boost our cop too. Uh, you Concep mean... Conceptualization. Was... Yeah, let's just double check that it was conceptualization. Yep, conceptualization. Yes. Alright. Uh, do, 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 do. Conceptualization. Mm, perception. Nope. Logic. There's a shirt. And the coat. I think those are the only two. Okay, so... We're at Encyclopedia plus three, Conceptualization plus two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Animated the Bang on the grill. ...all along the scaffolding. The voices coming from the other side fall silent. A pair of frightened hairs cowering in some dark crevice of their burrow. Who's there? Is that you, Morris? Oh, 
Are you all communists? I'm looking for some communists. Who said communists? Did we say communists? Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I, I've already built like 0.0001% of communism. But now I want to get organized. Can you help me? For a moment, silence. What's the password? What was I think the... it's five. Uh, is it one, two, three, four? I'm gonna go with five. Oh, 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 I thought we would get multiple chances at this. I don't trust that we're going to get multiple chances. Okay, it's... Remember Dobriva and... Abba... Stupid French were... Wait, not stupid French words, that's insulting the French. Um, and they're clearly better than us. Abaddon's. There's no response. You begin to wonder whether they've slipped out some back way. No, they're still there. You can feel them back there. All right. The key stick to the back of the door frame. Just make sure you put it back when you're done, or we'll all be locked out. And do wash the concrete. It just kind of falls away in places. Shaman? After you, detective. Have fun at your underground meeting, pig. Hope it's a blast. Whee! Whee! To the secret depths of communism! The two young men are either oblivious to or ignoring your entrance. Their attentions are fixed on whatever it is they're stacking in the middle of the floor. Is this a Rube Goldberg machine? Cause I'm in. Maybe. Matchboxes, it appears. I think it's holding Rolexes. Stiban the student communist. It is. Echo it's maker. Holding. Oh, he looks cool. I like the nerd. He looks neat. Huh. Careful, careful. No. Oh, sad. Damn. Hardly any difference. The young man shakes his head and then looks up at you and the lieutenant with barely concealed irritation. You two, you are late. They should know the meeting starts at 10 p.m. sharp. His companion looks up at you and squints. Hey, Stepan, isn't that your jacket? What a coincidence. You two have the same jacket. Wait, what? Oh, we really looted it from his room, didn't we? Uh -oh. It certainly looks like my jacket, Ulexis. Where did you get that gendarme? Must be a coincidence. I see these jackets all the time. Unlikely. That's real Sarmaritian twill. Only old Sarmaritian communists and drug smugglers wear those anymore. He is neither of those, of course. He is simply a poor student putting on ears. Also, he doesn't have the shoulders to fill out such a jacket. See, Uli? It's just like Mazovrot. How does it go again? Those committed to the rights of property are those most apt to violate them. The companion nods empathetically. I assumed it was Maurice who broke into my room to play a trick on me. I didn't think I'd actually been raided by the RCM. There is surprise in his voice, naturally. But is that a note of excitement you also detect? Why do you sound excited to be raided by the RCM? Oh, gendarme, because this is perfect. Can you imagine the look on Morris's face when he finds out the RCM has been kicking my door down? He shit himself, positively. And now they've shown up in force to break up our meeting. He rubs his hands together excitedly. <sighs> Something tells me this young man is not very experienced with law enforcement. I like this audio track. It's definitely interesting. Uh, hold on. We're not here to break up your meeting. We want to join your meeting. The RCM wants to join us? A quizzical expression. My partner, of course, is acting in a strictly personal capacity, not as an official representative of the RCM. Interesting. Does that mean you've done the reading? Uh-oh. 
No one said anything about reading. You'll just have to wing this one. Kim, did you do the reading? No, you did, dear. The only one <laughs> Lieutenant holds up his little blue notebook. I have not had time to see good pretentious communist book clubs, nor have I done their reading. It doesn't sound like they've done the reading, Stabon. Well, this is getting awkward. I'm not sure what you're expecting to find here then. There's profound consternation in his voice. You suspect it's about something bigger than you're not having done the reading. Maybe they can explain themselves. What exactly are you two doing here? In the most generous sense, I would say we're cultivating revolutionary consciousness. Yes, that's probably the best way to describe it. But more specifically, we are running a reading group. The most rigorous and theoretically advanced materialist reading group in Martinez. Comrade Steban is a great discussion leader. One of the best at the university. Yawn. Can you imagine anything duller than a bunch of Beano clouds yanking each other's knobs? <laughs> is this wagon square off in theory combat? Oh Christ. We have been known to get into some spirited debates. But it's always in service of our larger intellectual and ideological project. Precisely. We are not interested in... Yeah, like boy! We like to Gather run. around! Theory combat! Oh, boy. In that corner is game theory. <laughs> Within the contours of Mazovian historical materialism, of course. Okay. So, what does your reading group actually read? We study all the foundational texts of Mazovian theory, of course. Just last week, we finished the second volume of Puncher and Watman's Innocence of Capital. Truly extraordinary. And before that, we spent six weeks on state and plasm. Uh oh. You can feel your attention span rapidly deteriorate. How much do we fail by? Uh, four. Oof! That was legendary. Volition isn't that high, it's the ticket of four. Four. Yep, four. Force yourself to keep listening. We've also read Vert Muller's The Mega Structure of History, and before that, Real and Reality. Communist theorists love puns. In case that wasn't obvious. That Abla's in pain even even if that wasn't a pun, that that was an awesome like play title on real and reality. <laughs> the original Fisdale translation, not that watered down revisionist garbage. These two deserve the order of honor for bullshitting. There's no way they've actually read all this stuff. Obviously. But, of course, our special emphasis is on the theories of Ignis Nilsson and his followers, especially the inframaterialists. Wait, who are these inframaterialists? You're not familiar with them? It's pretty advanced stuff. You may not be ready for it yet, Jean Lo. The two men exchange skeptical side glances. Uh, but then who is this Ignis Nilsson guy? Only Krasmazov's most trusted lieutenant, the evangelist of the revolution, and the founding father of the People's Republic of Samara. It's hard to overstate how unimpressed wow. it is that you've never heard of this world historical individual. By one. Ooh. He also happens to be the greatest communist theorist after Mazov himself. It was Nielsen who first postulated the existence of ideological plasm, which forms the basis of inframaterialist theory. Plasm? Huh? Sounds like a hell of a drug. You might want to ask about it. The young man sighs. His companion looks about furtively. Where's the rest of the reading group? What do you mean? This is the reading group. So there's just two of you? We're in something of a rebuilding phase. Didn't they mention about another guy? Like Maurice or something like that? M m maybe? Some of our former comrades didn't have the ideological fortitude our work demands. Okay, but what happened to them? 
Intellectual attrition is maybe the best way to describe it. Felix said he couldn't keep up with the reading on top of his classwork. And Zuzana wanted to read texts other than Mazovian theory. Like novels, if you can believe it. Imagine the audacity of wanting to read a novel in a reading group. Novels! Unbelievable! See? Even the gendarme gets it. We've tried recruiting new members, but unfortunately the current intellectual climate is pretty hostile to inframaterialist thought. These days, if you're on the left, the ascendant schools are the Gotwaldians and their iconoclarts. Don't forget about Maurice and the turnips. Oh, uh, he's in a different part. Uh. <laughs> right. Then there is the whole turnip debacle. Whatever this turnip business is about, one thing is perfectly clear. These young students have a much deeper understanding of communism than you do. You could learn a thing or two from them. If you can convince them, you're one of them. Uh, did you say something about turnips? <sighs> it's an unfortunate story. You see, our ex-comrade Maurice is something of an economist. He's studying macro and microeconomics. <laughs> Both? A real intellectual, it sounds like. And then arches his eyebrows. Both at the same right. time. So a few weeks ago, we were discussing the extra physical capabilities of the revolutionary state. And Morris said, what were his exact words, Ulexis? It was unbelievable. He said, turnips don't care if they are grown by communists, moralists, or Vulcan. They grow just the same. Basically, he was rejecting the whole foundation of inframaterialist theory. Go along with... Mm, that may be encyclopedia. Remind me what inframaterialist theory says about turnips again. Simply that under suitably revolutionary conditions, crop yields naturally increase relative to non-revolutionary crops, which Morris somehow has the gall to deny. What? Susanna said that he has been hanging out with some non communists lately. For us, the question boiled down to if you don't even accept the basic ideas of Nielsen and inframaterialist theory, why are you in the reading group? So you expelled Maurice from. Wait a minute. Okay, um. So you expelled Maurice from the reading group over an argument from turnips. Well, it wasn't so much that he was expelled. He just quit coming. We haven't seen him around for weeks. Um, what about Cindy? Is she part of the group? Cindy is... How to describe her role? Something of an ideological... How the hell did I remember that? that? <laughs> yes. That's exactly how I would put it. And naturally, we support her radical counter-liberal aesthetics. But she refuses to submit an essay, so we can't call her a member of the group per se. That doesn't stop her from using the room for studio space, of course. Oh, oh wow, I just uh, noticed. No wonder they meant it falls away. Holy shit. Uh, who are the e Econoclards? For starters, they love talking about beans. <laughs> Uh, what's wrong with beans? I like beans. Oh, sure. But the Econoclards are obsessed with beans. They love thinking about beans. They love counting beans. But most of all, they love building models to predict how many beans there will be in the future. They're economists, essentially, is what I'm getting out of this. Mm. Little bean, bean counters. counters. Yep. Yeah. Nota bene. Econoclad is an extra pejorative form of the already pejorative name Mazovian Economists, a moderate school of Mazovianism which advocates the gradual transition to communism through carefully managed economic modernization rather than violent social revolution. They're by far the most of communism. What? Wait, what? I got sidetracked by the name Maurice. Do you remember Marsupilami? I'd never heard of this in my life. Okay, then. N never mind. <laughs> it 
It was a 1993 cartoon. It must not have lasted long. Um, it it was French. That's actually. why. Started in 1952 and had a French cartoon series in 2000. Hmm. And he had a gorilla friend named Maurice. And I do not know how that thought entered my mind. Maybe because we were talking Mike Lou and Og, somehow my like brain was in old cartoons. How did you watch a French cartoon in 1993? It had a... American cartoon in 1993. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I, literally nothing sticking out to me about that at all. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll show you his picture later. Maybe you would recognize him. Maybe? Ah, yes. The much maligned bean counters, ensconced in their think tanks and high rises, believing they can save the world through a series of incremental, assiduously technocratic reforms. Uh, I don't get it. Are the beans a metaphor? If only. They've got all the beans accounted for in their asset sheets. Their quarterly budgets, their future projections. But for some reason, there are never enough beans to go around. So we've just got to cut our bean rations in half. And next thing you know, there are budget cuts. So now we've got to cut the bean rations in half again. You see... Iconoclarchs claim to be communists, but in reality, they're just liberals with hard-ons for spreadsheets. And the Galtwaldians, what's so bad about them? They're the most depressing school of communism. They love writing long books with a patina of Mazovian theory to cover up their cheap psychologizing. A gang of cheap psychologists and intellectual midgets. Typical Gottwalders, in other words. Yeah. It's okay for Uli to say that, because his dad is from Gotwald. Uh, so what's depressing about their theories? The Gotwald school believe that intellectuals as a class are incapable of sparking revolutionary change. So all they can do is critique capitalism from inside itself. That's why they spend all their time smoking cigarettes and writing long works of criticism that make you want to commit suicide. That sounds miserable. It is miserable. That's probably why they're always committing suicide. You see, the Gotwal school look like communists. They talk like communists. But scratch the patina and you'll see beneath that they're just depressed liberals who've read too many books. And what about the liberals? Are they liberals too? Of course not. The only people who actually call themselves liberals are mouth-forming reactionaries. Basically indistinguishable from fascists. You'd need an X-ray machine to tell the difference. Um, I've heard enough. Let's talk about something else. Go ahead. Uh, did this reading group have some anything to do with the lynching? Lynching? No. We're not an operational cell. We think of ourselves as more of an intellectual vanguard. Uh, but what's your group's stance on the lynching? Our stance? What? Does he want to know if the SRV has established a party line on the lynchings in Martinez? The two young men look at each other. The SRV refers to the People's Republic of Samara, established as a socialist utopia by survivors of the revolution. It has since degenerated into a bureaucratic workers' state under the decades-long rule of President Sapor Mat Sport Kalazinski. Though, historically speaking, the SRV has supported direct action against right-wing paramilitary squads. Especially when they are doing the Indotribes dirty work. Good point. So as a provisional matter, I can say we support it. Are they being sarcastic? You feel like you're caught in some elaborate joke labyrinth. But it's impossible to see your way through. That's a wonderful that analogy. The a of joke labyrinth. Is a molten <laughs> sincerity that threatens to erupt forth. Uh, so what's you... it yet. So what's your stance on crime in general? That's easy. Crime is simply the inevitable expression of the injustice and incoherence embedded within capitalism itself. 
delivered with the smug assurance of a schoolboy reciting a maxim he's committed to memory. It's a symptom, in other words, not a cause. He raises his hand as though this is all there is to say on the subject of crime. His companion can barely suppress a yawn. Uh, is your reading group affiliated with the union somehow? No, we're an independent organization. We acknowledge and respect the union's efforts, but our interests are more theoretical than Mr. Clare's. He speaks the truth. Uh, are there any operational communists in Martinez? No, unfortunately. The communards were hunted down and killed nearly to a man. All that's left of them are bones and old rifles. Well, that's too bad. Um, I don't know. Maybe he's got info on the rifle we have. Uh, uh, like this one? His companion's eyes widen as you hold up the ancient weapon. Yes, like that one. Uh. I wonder how many of these are still lying around in cellars or sealed up behind the masonry. He knits his eyebrows together and then looks up. Can I hold it? I mean, it doesn't work, so I don't see why. Uh, here, oh, give him the rifle. It's heavier than I was expecting. The rifle rests in his open palms. Its position reminds you of something. The attitude of a priest bearing one of the holy relics of his faith. Though it is long out of service, its power is evident to him. When he's finished, he returns the rifle to you with a nod of appreciation. Uh, is the reading group accepting new members? We typically only accept new members once per semester. There's this whole process with essays and presentations on assigned topics. Young man turns to his companion. But given that we have some extra seating at the moment, I guess we could be convinced to expedite an application or two. Stevan, you can't be serious. For these gendarmes? I am serious. As materialists, we've got to adapt to conditions as they are. Besides, he still need to pass the interview portion of the entrance process. He turns back to you. Oh no, there's a test. Oh no. Assuming he's even still interested, that is. Ooh, composure. Ooh, plus six. Proud bookshop ruminant. Ooh. Is that because we bought books? Okay. Uh, uh, we have four. What, Do we, I think we have you, one thing for composure yet. What are you doing with these matchboxes just now? The young man frowns at the little pile of boxes on the floor. Nothing. Just messing around until the meeting started. They're watching those matchboxes awfully intently for two guys who are just messing around. It's almost as though they were trying to create the most unstable structure they could. That's enough tonight. Um, will you still be here if I have any more questions? Sure. We're here most every night. Maybe we'll catch you again. Sleep well, Jundan. Uh, okay. composure? Uh, do, 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 do. And then it'll be time for Green Circle Festival! Oh yeah. Wait, that was a yellow reaction speed was the one I saw. Yeah, that was a minus, though. Yeah, it was. Which will not be good if we Composure. need to re react. Uh, uh it seems like just that. Oh, wait, pants. wait, wait, wait. Yay, pants! Oh wait, my god, ooh. the shit covered. <laughs> Oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, hand eye and reaction, interfacing. Okay, so we've got three. Yay! The gendarme returns. 83%. Yeah! With a plus six. Uh, convince, him, convince him that you belong in the reading group. What's there to be scared of? You've really been cracking the books these last few days. You can go total intellectual toe with any reading group in Martinez. You've spent a not inconsiderable amount of time arranging the works in your mental library by theme and period. All the ideas and references you'll need are ready at hand. Now, chin up. You've got this. Uh, 
Uh, this is... Uh, this is just the group I've been looking for. When do we start? Oh, you want to start now? Sure, we can manage that. You've caught him off balance. The momentum is already in your favor. Go ahead and take a seat. Since we haven't had time to prepare an exhaustive questionnaire, I think we can keep this interview more freeform. Why don't you tell us a bit about the books you're interested in? And we'll just see where the conversation goes. Uh, for me, it's more finding the right thing for the right moment. We prefer difficult books. Books that might destroy you if you don't destroy them first. That's enough, Ui. It's the gendarme's opinions we are interested in. But to comrade Ulix's point, isn't there value in reading really difficult books just for the sheer challenge of it? I tried reading this extremely depressing Gardar novel. Oh, right. Sixteen days of coldest whatever. What was your take on it? This is a good start. They're starting to loosen up. You feel relaxed and in control. You ably summarize the novel's characters and themes. It's a good thing we read a book. <laughs> You're right. Even better, you're able to connect those themes to your critique of the novel's formal qualities, such as they are. But I eventually finished it. However, much physical pain it caused me. Yeah, well, that's right. This is the one that was causing us pain to read. <laughs> oh, yes! Sounds to me like a typical bourgeois social novel, designed to assuage the egos of frustrated housewives and win international awards. And Gradian realism is the worst realism. It's nearly as bad as Gottwaldian critical theory. Makes you want to gouge your eyes out. Or better gouge the author's eyes out. Oh! Eyes are eating out of your hand, practically. Another quarter of an hour disappears. The questions come rapid fire, but you have an answer for every one. Now you can sense things starting to slow down. The interview must be reaching an inflection point. But now I'm curious. Do you think there's value in reading so-called practical non-fiction? Listen, books are fine all, but to be straight with you, there's no substitute for a real story. Okay, we'll bite. What sort of stories are we talking about? Let's just say the human body does some weird things when it's been up in a tree for seven days. You've got our attention. Let's see where this goes. Yes, I'm rather curious myself. Gives <laughs> <laughs> in on it. These boys aren't even bothering to contain their interest. They want to see how you weave the threads of this story together. Even the lieutenant seems engrossed, despite your revealing details of an RCM investigation. Okay, but when you say he spoke to you, you mean metaphorically, right? Uh, <laughs> um, uh, no, I mean, literally. Ah, so there is a supernatural angle to this case. Another quarter of an hour oh disappears. God. Just keeps the going. Oh my God. Bounces back and forth. Whatever they Um, maybe we should have came back to this. <laughs> Now you can sense things starting to slow down. Uh, okay, I good. This tail up. But I'm still not sure how love did him in. There has to be some other element to it. We don't have the full story yet. Perhaps, but that thread of my story is still unresolved. I suppose we'll have to leave it there. But listen, Jondon. We could use someone with your breadth of expertise. With just a little more theoretical background, I think you'll be able to make some real contributions. Yes, I would say he's got serious potential at least. And with that, welcome to the most ideologically advanced materialist reading group in Martinez. Here's your first assignment. It's an overview of inframaterialist theory. A little basic, as you'll see, but one has to start somewhere. Oh, uh, great. I'll add to my very extensive reading list. You're going to fit right in, I think. Come back when you're done. We'll be here pretty much every night after 10 p.m. Do be sure to take your time with the reading. We'll be eager to hear your thoughts. Dang! 
Um, green dots, and then it's time to call it an episode. Well, there's something here first. Oh. Reflective construction vest. Endure. All right. Cool. Mmm, coffee. Mmm. At the bottom of the pod, an eye of black sludge rises from the shadowy sea. The poster reads, Under the cobblestones, communism. Ah. This one says, No war, but class war. The rickety easel, surrounded by pots of, of gauche? Cindy's, no doubt. Could it be the phasmid? No. I can't read that now because of this. Uh, it's sad. I'm trying to think about the cracks splintering out across the floor. Oh, man. Um, It's a method of painting gauche. Okay, I haven't actually heard the term before. Or actually, like, gouache. Okay, still not familiar. Okay. But I think that's it. Yeah, so next got time on five Di level points. <laughs> Holy shit! Um, next time on Disco Elysium, we will be getting, we will be ditching Kim and getting some sh leggings. We'll be getting some leggings, and we'll be getting a radio computer piece. Yes.